I find everything really difficult uh, because I just can't do anything. I can't. One thing I can't do is I normally do all of the stuff is cooking. I can't do any of the cooking. I can't cut anything. But at the moment, I can't even open this tin of um, coconut because I'm trying to do dinner. I couldn't cut the chicken, and I'm struggling to peel the carrots, and um, and I can't tidy up. And I just can't do anything really. I can't drive the rib. Um, and um, I can hardly even write, so even marking the kids' schoolwork is really difficult. I think it's all the things I normally do around the boat. It's about a week later now and I still, it's in a splint still, and I still can't move it at all because it hurts way too much. Um, tomorrow is like going to be the first opportunity really to get in to try and see the doctor and then hopefully get a referral to uh, get it x-rayed I guess to see what's wrong with it. You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea No matter how rough things may come to be You and me, we're family Okay, yeah, so we just tried to get into shore to go and check in and, um, you know, get a few more provisions and, uh, you know, get rid of some rubbish and stuff maybe find out about hospital but um, for my um, finger because it's really hurting um, it took us ages to get ready because I can't really do much now. I've only got one hand and it took us ages before and now it takes us even longer. And um, as we sort of set off the engine, which has slowly been getting more difficult, it's just kind of cutting out basically. So we've all come back again and um, Willie's going to have to have a look at it. It's probably the carburetor again. Um, so we've, today is not happening. Um, we're just going to, we'll try again tomorrow maybe, we'll see what happens. But um, We have got the bigger outboard but it'd be impossible for us to get it on at the moment without help because I can't use my other hand so everything is really difficult at the moment but we're in the Caribbean yeah I've taken this oil ring in off and it seems to have expanded out of its sort of popped out of its housing and I think that's the reason that the fuel is just pouring out but I've got nothing else similar they're, they're the only ones I've got are these ones but I replaced it with a kind of an outsized oil ring which seems to have done the job um, but I put it all back together and it was still cutting out and, and cutting out at high revs and, and cutting out low revs. So I took the pan again, took the carburetor completely apart this time and just shoved a, a sewing needle through the jets um, and there was a tiny, tiny little bit of grime came out. And uh, so I blew it through, cleaned it up, put it back together and now it's running fine. So that's what it was, just more grime in the fuel. never started as easy as that before. I mean, maybe I'm not sure I want to go out with one arm and try and do it with my left hand, but um, good job Willie. Really. This is lovely, this is St Anne in Martinique and it's just so quaint. Um, I can't remember the last time we've seen actually such a quaint little kind of um, villagey feel. But anyway, we've come here to check in, we've made it on the dinghy <laughs> in one piece-ish and um, we met some lovely people. So we're um, just going to check in first and I think then we're going to go to the pharmacy and see if we can get a better splint because I keep accidentally knocking my finger and it really, really, really hurts. So um, yeah, checking in first. So we're checking into Martinique. Um, another few questions we've been asked is uh, about checking into Martinique. Um, there are different ways of checking into Martinique, funny enough. Um, one of the easiest ways is to go to a check-in cafe and you go into a check-in terminal and you fill in all your details and then the cafe owner stamps it and that's it, which is the way we did it. Um, there are a few other protocols you've got to follow, but it's not checked on. So uh, we did um, isolate for seven days, including our time at sea. So we stayed on board for seven days um, to quarantine. We um, also arrived a few days ago from Suriname. Um, so we've just been on board for a few days just to fulfill at least seven days uh, quarantine. Um, we've also got kids um, and would love to meet the other boat. We've got a girl who's 14, a boy who's 12, uh, 11, sorry, and a boy who's nine. The only reason you can stay in Martin, you can't come just for leisure. You have to, st you have to come for a mechanical or health emergencies uh, of which we kind of tick both boxes at the moment because we've got no furlough, we've got no autopilot and Renko has broken a finger. 
so uh, we felt justified in, in stopping here. But uh, I don't think we can carry on because uh, all the other islands are shutting down. They seem to be going through another wave of, of COVID. It's, we arrived last week and um, because we hadn't checked in yet and we hadn't quarantined, we couldn't really get on shore. So finally today, um, we, I decided that we need to really go to the doctor and see whether we needed an X-ray. Um, I and mean, he did say, why didn't you come earlier? Because it's probably 10 days later now. Um, well, because of being at sea, in quarantine, and everything else, um, it being a weekend, that's pretty much why. So anyway, here we are, and um, we're going off, we've come into Le Marine, and we're gonna go and get the um, X-ray done, and then we've got to go back to him, and he's gonna have a look at it, and decide um, with the surgeon whether it will need operating on, or whether it, it, it'll just sort itself out. It's really whether the bones are lined up or not, whether they're misplaced. Fingers crossed, it's just fine, and they're just, they're just gonna seal together. But you know, you know with us, it's usually something more complicated than that. Here we go. While Orenka is getting a finger x-rayed, I'm uh, trying to find a few places. And uh, it's not easy, it's the middle of the day, most places are shut. I thought I'd left all that behind in, uh, in the Mediterranean, but uh, it's not the case. Um, so I found the uh, animal service centre, it took a bit of finding, but I found it in the end. Uh, and that's closed for lunch. And uh, electronic place, which is closed for lunch. So uh, I'm just going to go back to the cafe because we haven't got a digital card yet. We haven't got a SIM card yet, so I can't get in contact with the renker. Uh, so we agreed to meet to a, meet at a cafe in the other half of the marina. The thing is, the marina was split into two parts, and I didn't know. Uh, living the dream. Okay, you probably think that we make this stuff up just to you know have a story to tell, but it's not true. It just happens to us all the time, and today's. Um, excitement is that I have actually broken my finger the, the, um, the second bone down I think or was it third bone down is completely cracked fully and uh, that's why it's been so painful he's worried about this bottom bit here right it's like that bit along there that bone is broken brought the x-ray back to the doctor now I'm going to go and chat to him and um, he's going to tell me whether he thinks it needs an operation or not so the doctor sent us to the main hospital in Fort de France for a second opinion. Chief and orthopaedic surgeon said immediately like, yeah, we need to operate and put two screws in because it won't fuse otherwise. So they're talking about doing it tomorrow and um, I've got no idea how much it's going to cost. And then tomorrow we've got to be here at seven and then they're going to put an anaesthetic on one arm and they're not going to put me on in general, but I'm not allowed to eat or drink after midnight. Okay, so that's the next latest. Could be worse. Until tomorrow. It's been quite a, a hectic few days. Um, we've been backwards and forwards to uh, doctors and then x-ray departments and then back to doctors again and then up to the central hospital in Fort de France. It wasn't exactly how we planned to spend the first week in the Caribbean and we've seen a part of the Caribbean which um, doesn't really normally appear on the brochures. So we're um, back at the hospital again. We're, it was a five o'clock start this morning because we left the kids back on the boat so they're um, doing their homeschooling today hopefully. Um, but Arenka's has just gone in um, so she's going for surgery and I'm just waiting in the cafe. It's, yeah, so now it's just a matter of a waiting game. rank has gone in and because we don't speak French, it's very hard to kind of work out what's going on. This is the waiting again. Um, I've had to put this gown on and like these blue pants. <laughs> and um, it just feels weird that one minute, you know, we're sailing around the world and the next minute I'm in this kind of hospital and I don't know what's going on. And I'm quite scared because I don't really know, you know, how good they are or anything really. Um, so I'm hoping it'll only take a few hours and then we can really start to enjoy the Caribbean. The hospital doesn't look that overrun. I mean, we've, we've been to Palma when that was at the height, at its height of, of COVID and we've been to Martinique when it's at the height of COVID, visiting hospitals and uh, they don't seem that bad. Um, and the medical facilities in all these places we've been have been pretty good. The hospital here seems quite 
run down and kind of a bit shabby, but uh, everybody seems quite professional. We've had to hire a car for a few days, so that's been nearly 100 euros. Uh, and obviously a few medical costs of x-rays and things like that, I reckon we spent maybe two or three hundred euros. They're really good. It was just horrible listening. To, and I can't feel anything on my arm, it's completely numb. But I think it's the drilling that was really worrying me. Like I was there, away, and I just hear this drilling and, and, and this, them trying to manipulate the bone. It's just quite difficult to stay calm. They moved the bone back in place and put two screws in. And so now the thing is I've got to keep moving it now because um, even though it's going to hurt, I've got to move it to get it working again, otherwise I could have other problems. So that's my challenge really. But we left the um, lights on, so we got a flat battery and we got back to the hire car and we couldn't work out how to open the bonnet. So that's the conclusion. <laughs> Without a car, it was difficult to go back to the hospital to get the wound redressed, so we did it ourselves. It's all like clamped together though. It isn't even like stitched, it's just clamped. The look of the wound and the pain actually made me feel quite queasy. This is the last meeting with the orthopaedic surgeon. She's really happy with the finger. She said that it's the bones forming and she's really happy that I can bend it so much, but she needs it more straightened. If I can do that uh, passively, when you do inactive, it's no problem. Yeah. Okay. To help straighten the finger, I had to have a mold made up. And then we had to get the bill. So they didn't charge for the emergency operation, thankfully, but they just charged for the consultations. We think it's because France may have an agreement with the UK. Finished. 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 Glad for it to be over, we made use of the hire car and got some shopping and water canisters on the way home. Actually, one of the questions we get asked quite a lot is what do we do for travel insurance and medical insurance and health insurance? We don't have insurance. We don't have medical or travel insurance because what we do is we, first of all, we found it was unaffordable for five people to be living the lifestyle that we're living in and traveling to so many different countries and different continents. Um, we couldn't find an affordable insurance. So what we've done is we put a lump sum aside, uh, quite a significant part of our budget actually, um, to cover medical emergencies and mechanical emergencies. Um, so far we've only dipped into it once or twice. We visited probably every hospital along the Spanish coast. Um, but it hasn't been too significant actually, um, you know, we've dipped in and managed to kind of top it up again. So stay tuned for the next episode where we get to explore a bit more of Martinique and you get to find out what it's like to live on a boat. A big thanks for watching and especially thanks to our patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to become part of the patron family then follow the link in the description below or just put Mothership Adrift Patreon and I'll take you to the right place. You and me we're family The bond that we share is as deep as the sea No matter how rough things may come to be we would really love to hear from you, so if you'd like to leave comments, then go to our Facebook page or Instagram or even to our Patreon page where you can connect to us immediately. Stay by your side.